Short answer, yeah, she's good. But let's dive deeper. Ganyu was released in Genshin Impact 1.2, and since then, she's become the best reverse melt damage carry in the game, with her team being relatively cheap to build and ease of use that lets you achieve some high-end damage, with the bonus of being a very good choice in freeze as well. But how does she fare in version 3.6? Of course she's still good. It's not like her teams nor her got worse or anything. In fact, while her basic melt team is still powerful, far surpassing the power level needed to clear the 12th floor of Spiral Abyss, she has gotten some pretty big upgrades in newer teammates since she originally launched, namely Kazuha and Nahida, both being characters that players would generally want on their account regardless of circumstance. But enough about other factors surrounding Ganyu, let's talk about the Chilean herself. If you've played Genshin for a while, you already know what Ganyu does. But in case you don't, she is the epitome of a cryogenic nuke. The main reason why Ganyu is still held in high regard is because of her frost-like arrows that are unique to her charged attack. This one thing propelled her into the limelight and kept her there, with its amazingly good scaling that can rival some elemental bursts without the drawback of having a cooldown. This already high damage goes even higher if you equip her with effects catered towards charge attacks. Say, the Wanderer's Troop or Shimanawa's Forset or Hamayumi, the Inazumi Craftable Bow, to give a few examples. And yes, while this may sound great and all, you know, she has a lot of base damage, not on a cooldown, has access to a multiplicative reaction by being cryo, with multiple ways of further buffing that already high damage. But, can you really say that you would enjoy this gameplay? Nothing against the players that do like it, uh, to each their own after all. With that said, there are generally two team types that Ganyu is put in, those being Freeze or Melt, and maybe Mono Cryo, but you're gonna need a Shenhou for that to even be remotely worth using over the other two, but who in their right mind goes for Shenhou, unless you just like her, before getting Aiga or Ganyu? What was I saying? Oh right, Freeze or Melt. Ganyu Freeze obviously needs a Hydro character, so Mona, Kokomi, or Ayato. Then an Animal character, so Venti or Kazuha. And last is a flexible slot, usually Diona in most cases. Morgana is the most popular variant that consists of Mona, Venti, Diona. And to be honest with you, when it works, it works really well, until it doesn't. Then you'll be stuck questioning every decision you made in your life up to that point. Freeze on its own is already very polarizing in how it works. Either you can group up a cluster of enemies and freeze them, making them unable to attack, or the enemies just shrug it off and you'll feel like an idiot. And with how the harder content in the game has been getting more and more focused on boss enemies that cannot be frozen, yeah, Freeze is kinda dead. Topping that off is how expensive this team is to actually build. Three 5 star characters, with Mona being a standard banner character which you can get immediately or just not at all, and the other being Venti, a situational character that hardly helps solve this team's issues of enemies not being frozen and can be outshined in other departments. Uh, guys, if the enemies can't be frozen, it's also likely that they can't be lifted either. You might be saying that it's not a big deal. But the reasons why this team works is because of enemies being grouped close to one another so that Mona can apply the Omen debuff on them, making you do extra damage, and Ganyu's icicles during her burst that can hit for quadratic damage. Quadratic damage, meaning an instance of damage that is typically a single target attack, can hit multiple targets if they're grouped close enough. All to say, don't use Ganyu in freezing unless you have Mona or Venti. Even if you do, Melt is easier to pull off and achieves far better results. Side note, if you were that set on running Ganyu and Freeze, might I suggest you get Ayaka for it instead? I mean, that's a genuine suggestion, since Ayaka fills that role better than Ganyu due to Freeze teams being Ayaka's biggest strength. If you want more info on Ayaka, check out the video in the eye in the top right corner before coming back to this one. Back to Melt. Melt Ganyu is as easy as just using Shangling and Bennett. That's it. You're done. Shengling can be gone for free from finishing an early floor of Spell Abyss, and you can get Bennett through the Sword of Shop during certain months. Both of which you're probably going to build for other teams besides this one, anyways, because of how ridiculously overpowered they are on their own or as a combo. Your last slot for this team is generally a shielder for comfort usually Zhongli, since you're going to want some time to charge up Ganyu's arrows. This team is pretty easy to use and gets some crazy good results for the effort that you're putting into it. Strictly speaking, all you need for it to function is just energy recharge on Shengling and Bennett so that there's the constant power application and the attack buff. Obviously, you can also get Shengling to do damage if you wanted to, but the fact that it would still work without it speaks to Ganyu's raw power. Basically, unless they're immune to cryo, they're dying. Last thing to note about Melt Ganyu is a misunderstanding that I've seen floating around a lot, but Ganyu still needs a good amount of crit rate if you're building her for Melt. 
The reason that this is widely misunderstood is usually, when fully charged arrows hit an enemy's weak spot, it will always crit. But that is not the case for Ganyu's Frost Flake Bloom, the second part of it. This part can miss crit hits even if you hit a weak spot on enemies. Even if Ganyu has a passive effect that boosts the crit rate of her Frost Flake arrows after the first one, you still need to build her with crit rate to consistently see those high numbers. So, you want to know how to actually build Ganyu to get the damage she's capable of. The two builds are mostly the same, with a few exceptions for the freeze build, if you are planning on using it. Let's start with the stuff that stays the same. Weapons. Ganyu wants weapons that have an attack or crit substat to boost her damage. The best universal options you have are the Aqua Simulacra, Polar Star, Amos Bow, Thundering Pulse, Scoured Harp, and the Craftable Prototype Crescent. There are some weapons I didn't list just now because of their effects having a condition to reach that aren't as universal, but I'll lay them out now if you already have the weapons or you're planning to get them. For Melt Ganyu, her best weapon is the Hunter's Path, Tick Signature, since it offers a healthy amount of crit rate and an effect that buffs charge shots by her elemental mastery. Another specific archetype weapon is the craftable bow from Inazuma, Hamayumi. Gives a normal and charge attack bonus on the condition that you basically never use her burst. Like I said, these two options are melt specific since in freeze, you don't build for EM and also want to use her burst. But you can use the ones mentioned before and they'll do amazing in both cases. In terms of artifact main stats, you can use attack sands for both cases or EM sands for a jump when using her for melt, then a cryo goblet and a crit circlet, whichever crit you have less of. Substat focuses are generally the same, wanting crit and attack, EM for the melt build, or some ER for freeze. Artifact set wise, it is quite literally Wanderer's Troop for melt since it's easy enough to get, strong boxable, and unconditional for the four set effect, and Blizzard Strayer for freeze because of its cryo damage bonus and 40% crit rate boost when hitting frozen enemies, letting you build for more crit damage while only needing to build about 30% crit rate on her. While you can rent some other sets, these are the best ones that are currently in the game, but on your way to farming those sets, you can use the two-piece bonuses from the aforementioned sets, as well as any two-piece attack set. Obviously not as effective, but still good enough to hold you over until you do get those four sets. What if you already have Ganyu, or you're planning to get her and wondering if her constellations are worth your Prima Gems? I'm just gonna be straight with you, it's C0 or C6. The in-between constellations are alright, but they don't add much to her overall gameplay. She's already amazing and works without a hitch at C0, and it's not until C6 that she gets a pretty big upgrade and not needing to wait to charge her arrows after you use her skill, which you'd have two of, courtesy of her constellation too. So you can make her much snappier to play by charging your first arrow, using your skill, charge shot, skill, charge shot in quick succession. The C1 is a small cryo red shred and gives Ganyu some energy after you hit a frost flick arrow, and the C4 makes you do more damage the longer enemies stay in her burst field. So TLDR, not the best value on constellations, but should you decide to, you should go all the way to the finish line. To cap off this video, yes, Ganyu is still good, even after the two and a half years since her launch. She may not have as big of benefits with Dendro as some other characters, but she's had her own powerful bread and butter since the beginning that is still powerful in the current patches. Her playstyle might not be for everyone, I mean, all it is is just aim and shoot. If you like that sort of thing, then all the power to you. And there are some teams involving Dendro that she can make use of, like Burn Melt with Nahida, but Ganyu's team has stayed the same for so long because it's so easy to build and use no sense in fixing what's all overpowered and broken. If it was, and still is, working so damn well. Should you decide to get her, you won't be disappointed with her performance. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.